Hello guys, in this lecture we'll be learning how to allow users update their profile information in the database. And for our login system, we are going to allow the users to update their username and also uh, update their email address. We already have a password reset functionality that allows the user to uh, reset their password. I have added a new file, editprofile.php which we made reference to previously in our profile page here and I said I was going to explain more about the URL variable that we have here. What we are actually doing here, it's actually sending a variable through the URL parameter uh, user identity so that we can retrieve whatever is stored in this variable and query against our database. So when the user click on this link, the information that we put here whatever the value that we put here is going to be sent to the url and we can use the php super global get variable to uh, retrieve that information from the url in our edit profile.php page we have the title we have included the header and we have also included the file to pass profile and then we have the h2 here which is edit profile and as we've always done previously here we're just going to display whatever the result is when we uh, click on the button to update user profile and uh, this line of the code is going to display the error messages we should be already familiar with this by now next we're checking if the username is not set if there's no section called username we're going to say you're not authorized to view this page otherwise we're going to show a form which uh, contains the information of the user. So the information that will be displayed here will be the email address and the username and also the ID of the user. So all this information we are actually getting from the URL uh, variable that was sent when the user clicked on that link to edit profile. I'm going to show you how we retrieve all this information. We're already familiar with the input feed for uh, email address and also the username and here we have the input type of eDIN which is going to be the ID of the user. Basically when we want to update a record in the database we need a way to identify which record we are actually updating. That's why we need to send the ID of the user as an eDIN value along with the post when the user click on the button to update profile. The post array that is created when the user click on this button to update profile we contain the id of the user so in that way we can be able to say update this record in database where id is equal to the id that we're getting from here let's go over to passprofile.php page and i'll show you some changes that have taken place there from the last lecture we were actually checking just to see if the section id is set and then we were getting the session id and we were querying the database so now i've added some a bit of code here to improve how we can do this first of all i'm checking if the section id is set or the url variable get user identity is set so if any of this is set and the user has not clicked on the update profile btn so if we go back to our edit profile page you see here that i named the button update profile btn so we're saying if the section id is set and the user identity uh, variable is in the url and the user has not clicked on the update profile btn then we are going to perform all the operation within this if statement that ends uh, here. Next, I'm doing a check again to see if actually the user identity variable is set. Then I'm going to get the value that was sent to the URL. So that will be stored in the PHP get super global variable. I will store it in this variable called URL encoded ID. And next we are going to use the base64 decode function to decode the value that was sent over to the URL and store it in decode ID variable. 
after decoding the value that was encoded then we want to extract the id of the user and like we did the last time we're going to use the php explode function to convert the string saved here into an array and we are using the encoded user id which we used when we created the uh, encode id if you remember here we are actually encoding the id using base 64 and i used the encode user id as a string which is a delimiter so i'm using this delimiter again to explode the string so i can extract the id of the user at position one so when I extract the ID of the user position one, I store it to this variable ID. So otherwise, if the user identity get variable is not set, then we are going to store the section ID in this variable ID so that we can actually continue to query the database as we did previously and pull out the information of the user. We're going to be using this just this block of code to uh, show the profile information of the user and also when the user click on edit profile this block of code is also going to run and we're going to populate the form with the information here before we proceed we go over to the browser and view the page so once we log in i'm going to click on my profile page and we can still see that the profile information is displaying here correctly when i click on edit profile we're going to display the edit profile form and you see that the information is also displayed correctly here and the reason why we have to go through that double check is because once we click on that edit profile i'll go back here once we click on this edit profile link the url is going to always contain the user identity parameter and the value uh, that we sent to it. So when we uh, refresh the page, it's always going to be there. So that is the reason why we are checking if this button is not clicked. So if this button is clicked, then our code is actually going to uh, ignore all the operations that we uh, have here. So for instance, I'm going to attempt to click on remove the value here and just click on the button. So we see that our code is keeping this first segment of the code, which is uh, retrieving the information of the user and uh, going over to run the code that I've not shown you yet. So if I refresh this page, still do the same thing. If I go back to the profile and click on edit, it display the information of the user in the form again. So next we're going to look at the code that updates the user's information when we click on this button. So after the if statement, we have the S block here, and this is a bit of code, but everything here you have actually seen before in our previous lecture. So we're checking to see if this button is clicked, update profile BTN. If this is clicked, we're just initializing a variable to store our error messages, and we are going to specify the fields that are required. Uh, all this we have already covered before. We're requiring the email feed, we're requiring the username feed, and then we're calling here the function to check for empty feed. Next, we're going to check for the length of the username to ensure that it's uh, not less than four. And we also call the function to ensure that that check is passed. Next, we just check here to see if the email address entered by the user is a valid email address. After that, we are going to collect the information sent through the form. After that, we are going to check if the form error array is empty. If the form error array is empty, that means that the uh, validation passed successfully, no problem with the form. So we are going to create a statement within a try catch block to update the information of the user in the database. So here we are creating the SQA update statement. And here we are going to prepare that statement and here we are going to execute the statement so we are saying update users set username equals user and email equals email where id is equal to id so id is going to be equal to the eden id that we call it here username is going to be equal to the value sent through the username feed and email is going to be equal to the value sent through the email feed next we're using the uh, PDO row count function to check if one row was actually uh, updated in the database. 
If that was true, we're just going to display profile updated successfully using our sweet alert JavaScript function and store the value in result. Otherwise, if there was no records updated in the database, we're going to say nothing happened. You have not made any changes. And in the S part of the statement, we are checking for errors in the form. This uh, code we're already uh, familiar with. So let's go over to the browser and try to update the profile of the logged in user. So I clicked on this and it logged me out. The reason why it logged me out because I set the time in our guard function to two minutes. So I'm just going to uh, change that now. Here we set the time to two minutes. I'm going to change this to 10 minutes. And then I'll go over to the browser again and log in. Profile, then edit profile. When we click on this, you say it's nothing happened. You have not made any changes because it's still the same information that we actually have here. So again, I come here and say demo and I'll make this demo 27 and click on update profile. It says profile updated successfully. Okay, so when we check this, you see that it's now demo 27. If we go over to the database and do browse, see that this is demo 27 and I could come here again and set it back to demo. So profile updated successfully.